filmed this. <laughs> and every time someone got chopped, their dish was fed to the dog. <laughs> Ted Allen. Thank you very much. Well, thank you guys so much for coming. As Sally said, I, I host a show on Food Network on Tuesdays called Chopped, which if you, if you haven't seen it, I think it's pretty good. Not because of me, um, but because of our, our chefs. It's an incredibly hard competition in which four chefs show up and there are three rounds, appetizer, entree, and dessert. And for each round, they get a mystery basket with four ingredients that they must use. They have to use all of the, all four. It's usually four. Uh, and they're ingredients that really don't go together very well. So we, we might give, and sometimes they're exotic, like sea urchin. Uh, and sometimes they're weird, like Doritos, which is not food, really. Uh, um, what else? I guess I should just cook some stuff. So why don't I start with... Uh, I'll start with this really simple dish that, that I have, have virtually no work to do uh, in order to make it. For barbecues and for dinner parties, one of the things uh, that I love to do that, that really saves you a lot of t uh, energy and trouble when you're serving your friends are salads that you can make ahead that don't have to be hot or cold. Bean salads, corn salads, um, I, I love to do this. And it was just this summer that I discovered by reading someplace online that um, a way to make um, corn on the cob, a, a way to get the husks off, uh, a, a way to get the silks off more easily. If you nuke it, if you microwave it in the husk for about three minutes, uh, you're cooking it of course, but all, it also becomes much, much easier to brush these obnoxious silks off of here. So I like to microwave the corn for a few minutes. It's almost the only thing I do in the microwave, aside from defrosting chicken stock. Um, and then throw this on the grill for a little while to get some, to get some color on it. I guess I should just do that. Well, but then it's already been done and I'm just going to... I'll take this one. I'll save that for later. So, but you, you basically have, have cooked it by the time you microwave it for three minutes. Throw it on the grill just to get a little charred flavor on it, get a little color, um, and you'll end up with something that looks kind of like that. And uh, so I just take a few ears of corn. That looks like only one. Um, a little bit of diced beefsteak tomato. Extra virgin olive oil. Don't even need to whisk the vinaigrette together ahead of time. Oh, that's for grilling the corn. Oh, let's see. I want to get to the chimichurri sauce. Uh, a little bit of lime juice or lemon juice. A little garlic. This is definitely too much. Bam. You know. I get people laugh every time I do that. I, and I kind of feel like I owe Emerald a royalty. A uh, little bit of salt and pepper. Um, I usually use kosher salt just because you can kind of Chefs, I'm not a chef, I'm not a chef, I'm just a cookbook author. But uh, chefs like kosher salt because you can sort of feel it in your fingers. You can feel how much you're, you're putting on the food. They also like to salt from way up in the air. <laughs> For some reason, I don't know why. No, because it sort of distributes it evenly and because it, it, it creates the maximum amount of mess in the kitchen. I had a, a, a barbecue this summer with a bunch of the judges from Chopped. Uh, they came to my house which is a very smart thing to do because they bring amazing food. Uh, I had Amanda Freitag, Jeffrey Zakarian, uh, and Chris Santos and Mark Murphy. The, uh, the, there were two problems with that though. One is that um, when chefs come to your house, you quickly learn that they think all of your platters are way too small, way too, way, they need, you know, they're chefs. The other problem is that Chris Santos shows up with a cooler that would go from about here to about here. It's like a coffin with like 47 racks of ribs and, you know, a giant tub of shrimp. They think big, chefs. Um, but the food was great. Sometimes guy before, I, I love the Sun-Times, but the, it's not, newspapers not doing so well these days. Uh, so a little bit of uh, basil. You could go with tarragon, you could go with parsley, you could go with a combination. Stir that up in an appropriately sized bowl. <laughs> unlike, unlike this one. That's a little soupy. I think I needed more corn for that one. But anyway, yours will be uh, proportioned correctly, and all will be well. So that's the kind of thing that you can make a day ahead, keep it in the fridge, uh, put it out when it's time to serve, no muss, no fuss. Um, and it's always fun to work in somebody else's picture. So the other dish I'm going to make is a skirt steak with a chimichurri sauce that I'm putting a little bit of a variation on by 
roasting jalapenos, uh, or grilling them, actually. These have been grilled a little bit, but I'll grill them some more. To get some char on them, you know, I, I just love that, that flavor. Uh, and I'm also adding a little bit of red wine to the chimichurri. Have you all had or made chimichurri sauce? Um, it's a, a sauce made with herbs and olive oil. It's, um, and garlic and a little vinegar. It's bright and vivid. It's a gorgeous bright green color. Uh, and it's super easy. And you're gonna walk out of here with enough of it in your head that you could, it's very forgiving. You could go home and make it in your sleep. And it is so delicious on steak. Um, I'm gonna make it with half parsley, two cups of parsley, lots and lots of herbs here. These are all gonna get ground down into nothing. I'm sorry, that was cilantro. And a couple cups of Two cups of parsley, two cups of cilantro. Cram that in there and we'll hope that it works. Um, I like to roast the jalapenos for that, for that char. These guys were already pretty much there anyhow. And then, I don't even know what this is, but let's put that in too. <laughs> Once again, garlic. You, you want a lot of garlic in chimichurri. And a, a couple other little variations that I like to do with it is to put a little bit of red wine, uh, which gives it some acidity. In this case, I'm using Robert Mondavi Private Selection Meritage, uh, which is really too good to cook with, but actually you need to use good wine when you cook, of course. Garbage in, garbage out. Yummy in, yummy out. Maybe that should be my catchphrase, no. No, no. I'm still looking for one. Uh, in addition to the wine, a, just a little bit of red wine vinegar. This is about a tablespoon and a half. Uh, a nice little dose of lime juice, again, for that brightness and acidity. A little bit of water, that's just to help give us uh, some liquidity, which I'm sure we all could use a little more of right about now. It's a recession joke, that's really always fun. Yeah. And then about half a cup of extra virgin olive oil. And I think you, I'm foreshadowing the fact that I am going to blend this, and then that's it. And the only thing that's tricky about it is that sometimes you gotta mash it a little bit to make it um, all go. One time on Chopped, a chef stuck a spoon into the blender and almost took his finger off. And there it goes. I know it looks like, I don't know what I'm doing, but I, I, I do. I do, seriously. I've made this before. Okay, now I have chimichurri on my face. Okay. That's a little more like it. And once it calms down it, 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 and the foaminess goes away, it'll be more of a pretty green color. So, I guess I'm doing this backwards. I haven't even put the steak on. What's the matter with me? I can cook. I actually just finished another cookbook. Um, we just photographed it in my house. It comes out in May. Um, so if you'd be so inclined, I'd be very appreciative if you were to shoplifted or because even if you steal it that means the book the bookstore will order more in, in fact i think I, I would probably get a royalty either way you know what i'm missing now is the actual steak that's what i'm missing excuse me hey paul can i have some raw skirt steak please <laughs> no you cooked all the steak Oh, man. I think I've been chopped. You've been chopped. Get out of here. Okay. Skirt steak or flank steak? Uh, uh, I like skirt steak and flank steak, both very much. And they're kind of similar, but um, skirt steak is usually a little thinner. And, uh, but the key with both of them, they, they're tough. If you, you, can't cook them, you can't cook them well. You can't cook them well done. Um, they'll, or they'll be too tough to eat. That, so you have to cook them medium to medium rare. So if you don't like your steak that way, this isn't the cut for you. But if you do, you're rewarded with uh, a, just a ton of beef flavor and, um, and the, the cost savings is none. Slice it across the grain, and, and as, the, as we're always saying on Chopped, you need to let the meat rest for about 10 minutes before you cut it. And don't worry about it getting cooling off. Maybe put some foil, tent some foil loosely over it. That allow, you know, when you heat a piece of protein, the, the juices get, um, I think they get, they get forced into the center or pulled out to the out, outside, I forget which. 
Um, if you cut it too soon, all those juices are gonna pour out onto the cutting board. You hear us talk about that all the time if you watch Chopped. Uh, good candidate for this also, there's a lot of uh, sort of sweet, buttery quality to corn that I think makes sense with chard. Um, maybe a little bit of citrusy notes in there as well. Sauvignon Blanc might be nice too. But the star of the show here, and please feel free to eat whenever you like, um, of course is our Robert Mondavi private selection, Meritage. And uh, the Meritage works nicely with that because it, it the, the tannins in the Cabernet, you know when you drink a, a big red wine and you get kind of that that dried out feeling on your palate, that's from something in the, in the wines called tannins. Cabernet Sauvignon is very high in tannins, which makes it work well with fatty things, with cheese, with steaks. Um, you know what? You've got the plastic forks and no knives. <laughs> oh, the, that's, feel free to just grab it and <laughs> go for it. Uh, I hope you're finding the Meritage to be a nice pairing with the steak. Now, I don't get too technical about wine stuff, and we have people here who can, if you like that sort of thing. Um, I'm just here to encourage people to try wines, and if and if you maybe uh, if you're someone who's relatively new to wine. Oh, hi, Andre. How you doing? Good. How are you? If you're relatively new to wine, uh, the two pieces of advice I usually try to give people, well, you've already followed one of them, which is go to places where you can taste a lot of different things. Uh, that that's why you paid what you paid, um, and try to remember to write a couple of the of the brands down. That's what I always forget to do. Cheers. <laughs> Thank you all very much. Be sure to try some of the wines and uh, enjoy your day. And how about that sunshine? Didn't see that coming. Yay! And take these uh, Govinos with you. They're recyclable. They're reusable.